What is the CalTPA? CalTPA is an approved summative assessment for multiple and single subject credential programs in California. CalTPA is split up into two cycles, which can be submitted separately. Both must be passed. CalTPA is high stakes. Completion of a summative assessment of this nature is required at a state level for a multiple subject or single subject credential. Complications from the COVID-19 pandemic may cause some alterations to normal operating procedure per executive orders granted by the Governor of California. How to be successful on a cycle of the CalTPA. Don't procrastinate. Read the handbook plus the rubrics. Be thorough and explicit in responding to each prompt in a manner which meets the details of the rubrics. As missing any rubric requirement may lock your score in the lowest bracket with missing content. Show your teaching skills. The CalTPA is an opportunity to showcase all of the high-level teaching techniques you have learned in the credential program. Film the entire lesson and use a video editing software to snag the best five-minute example of yourself meeting the content required for the rubric. While the video must be continuous and unedited, you have the ability to choose the start and end point of the video segments. Technical questions and how to submit. What is the cost of CalTPA? CalTPA costs $150 per cycle attempt. As of today, it may change by the time. Who scores the CalTPA? CalTPA is scored by trained and calibrated California education professionals qualified in the content area being submitted. Where is the CalTPA submitted? Please visit the following website for the registration and payment process, templates, most recent information and materials for the CalTPA. http colon forward slash forward slash www.ctcpa.nesinc.com what is the passing threshold for the CalTPA? The passing score standards for the redeveloped CalTPA as of August 23, 2019 are as follows. Cycle 1, 8 rubrics. A final cut score of 19 points with one score of 1 allowed. The following are evidence that is required to be submitted for grading for the CalTPA Cycle 1. Step 1. Plan. Part A. Written narrative. Getting to know your students. No more than nine pages. The template is provided in the handbook. Part B. Lesson plan. The template is provided in the handbook and is highly recommended to use, but not mandatory. Part C. Written narrative. Lesson plan rationale. No more than seven pages. The template is provided in the handbook. Part D. Instructional materials and resources. No more than eight pages. Step 2. Teach and assess. Part E. Annotated video clips. No more than five minutes each. Step 3. Reflect. Part F. Written narrative. Reflection on what you learned. No more than three pages. Step 4. Apply. Part G. Narrative. Application of what you learned. No more than three pages of written or no more than five minutes of video explanation. Cycle 2. Nine rubrics. A final cut score of 21 points with one score of one allowed. The following documents that are required to be submitted for grading or the Cal TPA Cycle 2. Step 1. Plan. Part A. Written narrative. Contextual information, no more than four pages. The template is provided in the handbook. Part B. Learning segment template. The template is provided in the handbook. Part C. Written narrative. Assessment descriptions. No more than seven pages. 
The template is provided in the handbook. Part D. Description or blank copy of the informal assessment. Part E. Description or blank copies of both the student self-assessment and corresponding rubric. Part F. Description or blank copies of both formal assessment and corresponding rubric. Step 2. Teach and assess. Part G. Four annotated video clips, no more than five minutes each. Part H. Written narrative. Analysis of informal and student self-assessments, no more than three pages. The template is provided in the handbook. Step 3. Reflect. Part I. Formal assessment responses from three students. One exceeded sample, one met sample and one not yet met sample. Part J. Written narrative. Analysis of formal assessment results and reflection of whole class and three students, no more than five pages. The template is provided in the handbook. Step 4. Apply. Part K. Written narrative. Next, steps for learning and reteaching or extension activity, no more than seven pages. The template is provided in the handbook. Part L. Annotated video clip, no more than five minutes, of follow-up instruction. There are three videos for Cal TPA Cycle 1 and five videos for Cal TPA Cycle 2, five minutes each as of today. It can change or update by the time. I have provided a link in the description for the latest updates. What happens if you don't pass a cycle of the Cal TPA on your first attempt? While high stakes, it is not the end of the world. Multiple attempts can be made, and you have many resources to help you make another attempt. All failing scores require the candidate to pay again, register, complete and submit your next attempt on that cycle to Cal TPA. What a non-passing score in a rubric means. The candidate showed some skill but did not explicitly show the teaching techniques needed to be in charge of a classroom or the element of the TPA did not meet performance standards as outlined by the rubrics. What a non-passing score in a rubric does not mean. That a candidate is unfit to be a teacher or does not have the skills to become a teacher. While the TPA is a high-stakes assessment, it is not the only measure of your teaching. A simple oversight can cause a non-passing score, as any missing element in a rubric can cause the score to lock at a very low score, no matter how great the rest of the content is. A non-passing rubric is simply mistakes to be addressed, not an assessment of your capability. If you must resubmit. View it as an opportunity to hone your teaching skill and display the techniques you have learned in the credential program in order to meet the passing rubric levels. We have seen students go from a non-passing score to an exemplar score. If you find this video useful, please like and subscribe. Thank you.